YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another Washington Commanders video and in today's video I'm coming on here to talk about the Washington Commanders and the players that they just signed So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video But before we do, make sure you go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new And turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL or in this case our Washington Commanders We're on the road to 4,000 subscribers wherever so close So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, thank you so much in advance Now, let's get straight into today's video so watch the commanders wasted no time re-signing tackle cornelius lucas swing tackle to a two-year eight million dollar deal well i guess they waited you know waited some time because i was surprised at two things with cornelius lucas this offseason one why we waited so long to answer contract talks with him and two he he, he was still available once we started to talk to him which it got, yeah, I'm right. It didn't take that long because yesterday it just came out that they entered contract talk with him. And then a day later they, they got a deal done. But again, his production is underrated. This dude is a swing tackle. He's able to play left tackle, right tackle. He did it well in 2020. And he stepped in 2021 when he had to, uh, for the most part, Charles Leno was healthy though. I'm um, talking about that right side with Sam Cosme when he went down. He was he was available and he was really really well. He he it was not really a no drop off and that's the good thing about Cornelius Lucas is yeah he may not be a starter he can definitely start again that's why I was surprised that he was still out there um, at the time of us resigning him because he has the talent to start on an NFL team and be a right or left tackle um, but. Even if he's not starting, he's there, and he can play both positions. That's why it's so important that we have a guy like Cornelius Lucas on this team that we can resign because we need the depth. You know, the depth has been getting tested on, on the offensive line with, you know, the guard positions with letting Eric Flowers walk. And now, you know, obviously letting Brandon Sheriff walk and we replaced him with Andrew Norwell. Uh, Sadiq Charles is still out there, though. Wes Schweitzer, again. It's starting to make more sense unless we do something in the draft that Sadiq Charles will be the starting left guard because, again, Wes Schweitzer is too valuable to this offensive line unit. He can play both guard positions and center. So, again, I don't see them starting in week one. I would, I would start him, but I don't think they are going to just because, again, he's valuable to this team. Chase Rooley is coming back off of a season and the injury. Um, it's a lot, but I'm excited that we re-signed Cornelius Lucas, a W signing. Um, we need Cornelius Lucas. Corn Luke is a guy that needs to be on this roster moving forward just because he is a valuable asset. He can step right in just in case Sam Cosme, knock on wood, or Charles Leno goes down. So welcome back to the DMV. Welcome back to the Washington Commanders, Corn Luke. Moving on, the Washington Commanders has signed Danny Johnson. Um, he's a guy that I really, really was growing to like last season. Um, I felt like he was a guy that was playing that slot position really well. It goes back to that Packers game, which I think was his best game um, that I've seen him play. Um, he he was in. And I remember that was that that was that stretch of games where. And if you guys tune into the to the live streams, as as, as you know, live stream every single game. Been doing it for two two seasons straight. Um, if you guys remember, it was a stretch where our cornerbacks could not tackle. Like they just would. Kendall Fuller, William Jackson would try to come down with the shoulder tackle, and and tight ends like get up off me. I remember Travis Kelsey. He tried to do it to Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey said, "Man, get off me." Um, but Danny Johnson in that Packers game, he was showing these boys how to come down and make tackles. He was playing good coverage in that slot. Um, in that slot versus the Packers. Remember the Packers. They really weren't doing nothing on offense for the most part of that game. We just couldn't capitalize on offense. If you look back on it, if we were able to capitalize on offense, i.e. Taylor Heineke being able to walk into the end zone instead of trying to, you know, what did he do? Did he try to sit? No, he tried to slide or something, and he came up short. If if you if, if we score touchdowns, man, we win that game. Honestly, but Danny Johnson played really well in that game. He's a good kick returner and punt returner too. So I don't know if we're as eager to dis to resign DeAndre Carter now. Um, I don't know if we were eager to begin with because again, he just like Cornelius Lucas, he's still out there. Um, and he's a guy that I thought they would try to resign ASAP because of the production he provided for us last season from the kick return, punt return duties, and as a wide receiver. But getting Danny Johnson back, they may feel like, okay, we can kill two birds on one stone with having Danny Johnson back. And he could be our kick return slash punt returner. Maybe not at the level of De DeAndre Carter, but 
he can do it. Um, similar to Dax Mill, and they had him returning punts too last year and, and um, you know kick returns. But we'll see. Uh, but I'm glad Danny Johnson's back. I hope he gets some more action in that slot this season. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they handle things, though. I'm pretty sure Kendall Fuller's going to get the bulk of that uh, with St. Juice coming back. And he's going to be our number two outside corner. Unless they put St. Juice in the slot. St. Juice, you can move him all around. Um, I really like my Benji outside, though. He in, in the slot is cool, too. But Benji, man... He has that potential. I remember when we first drafted him, I was like, Benjamin St. Juice from Minnesota, really? Juice is, he, he got that potential, man. I really like St. Juice. I hope he could stay healthy, man, because when he's on the field, he's really, really solid. He's, he's tall, he's long, he's lengthy. Um, his speed isn't really much of a problem as I thought it was going to be just because he was a tall corner. He has it all, man. As long as he can stay healthy. He can be that number two corner opposite of William Jackson. But Danny Johnson, welcome back to the squad. I'm excited to have you here. Oh, man, let's do business, man. Let's go to work. Um, F.E. Ibado. F.E. Ibado, um, defensive end from the Carolina Panthers that uh, that we signed. I believe he played for Buffalo, his most recent team. But we signed him to a contract. Um, obviously, Ron Rivera knows him. He's a part of that pathway program from London. And it was a stretch of the season that I heard, I want to say 2018, where he was tearing it up in the league. Uh, for the Panthers, so hopefully we can get that out of him. He's a depth piece behind Chase Young and Montez Sweat, um, you know, so he may not, he probably won't get in, um, too much burn. Let me knock on wood again. Um, assuming Chase Young and Montez Sweat stay healthy for the whole season, please, God, we know we need them. Um, but it's good to have some depth behind those guys and a guy that can actually go out there and contribute. Um, I know we're tired of the Casey Two Hills, the uh, Daniel Wise is of the world. Effie Ibada is not that. Um, he can actually go out there and be good at some point, you know. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, he can be good for the Washington Commanders. Like, he can be uh, a guy that could fill in for Chase Young and Montez Sweat whenever they go down. So, I'm glad to have him here, too. And, again, he can rekindle that, 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 that chemistry that he had with the Panthers and with the head coach Ron Rivera. So again, the Washington Panthers, man, you know what I'm saying? But um, the last I want to talk about is J.D. McKissick talking to um, the media, and he talked about how he felt like if Washington didn't get injured late, they would be a playoff team. And I would not I would agree with him. I really would. You remember late, late in that season, we hit our stride, four-game one streak, and then after that, COVID just hit us. COVID and then injuries um, hit us, and then JD went down in the Seahawks game, and Logan went down in the Raiders game. Yeah, man, I I, I would agree with JD that that if we didn't get hurt, we're a playoff team. We're probably getting that number seven seed instead of Philly. But um, yeah, man, let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section down below. We're on the road to 4,000 subscribers again, so hit that subscribe button. As always, me boy Juan Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe, help to the Washington Commanders. Peace.